Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining today's webinar. I'm Victoria DiMatteo from Dealer Track Registration and Title Solutions, and I'll be your moderator for today. Before we start, I would like to cover some housekeeping items. As an attendee, you're in listen only mode, so your microphone will be muted. There will be a question and answer session following the live demo, so please submit any questions you may have in the chat window and we will answer as many as we can. You will only be able to see the questions that you have submitted. If you happen to experience any audio or technical issues during the webinar, please refer to your registration confirmation email for dial-in information. Finally, we'd like to get your feedback on some of today's discussion points, so we'll periodically stop to ask poll questions. Once everyone has had a chance to submit their response, we will tabulate the results and share everything with the group. Now I'll pass it over to our speakers, Joey Yates and Liz Gunnan. Thanks, Victoria, and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Joey Yates. I am the Senior Director of Business Operations here at Dealer Track, and I've done a little bit of everything over my career with um, Cox Enterprises uh, and Cox Automotive, but uh, currently, and for the last year or so, I've been overseeing two of our businesses, one is Express Recoveries, which helps uh, primarily lenders with the cancellation of aftermarket products. And then the other is Accelerated Title, uh, which we'll talk about in more detail today toward the end of this, uh, this session. I'm very happy to be here with you today. And I'm joined by my colleague, Liz Gunnan. Uh, Liz Gunnan is our Director of Account Management and Training for all of our titling businesses. Um, I like to say that she's already forgotten more about titles than I've already learned. <laughs> Um, so she'll do a great job of leading us through uh, this, most of the content uh, that we're going to go over today. So uh, without further ado, let's kind of dig right in. Um, dealers uh, such as yourselves, as you know, are using technology more effectively than ever before. Um, you know, they say that necessity is a mother of invention, and we have had um, obviously an extraordinary year where we've had extraordinary needs uh, that have created really uh, probably more progress in terms of digital adoption in the last nine months than we've seen in the previous nine years. So we're going to talk today about how you guys are doing such a great job of using that technology to provide an online experience for your customers and to obtain financing and to work the deals more effectively and smoothly than ever before. And we really want to talk about how you can extend that digital transformation from the great work that you've already done on the front end of the process all the way through to the back office to help complete those deals just as effectively. We, we believe, and we're going to make the case today, that every reason your dealership has for choosing to use its existing technology on the digital retailing space also applies equally to the back office. So we'll talk about workflow efficiency. We'll talk about uh, driving accurate tax and fee calculations for that deal that you're working. And then we'll also talk about cost savings. And in the case of titlings, uh, titling relative to trade-ins, we'll talk about how that drives a better cash flow experience for your dealership. And then finally, we'll talk about uh, what really all comes down to at the end of the day, which is our customers and how all of these things together can help you improve that customer experience in a dramatic way. Um, the way that we're going to do that is Liz is going to go through a number of scenarios. Um, she'll talk about various situations that we see commonly playing out in dealerships like yours. And we'll talk about how digital solutions can really help your dealership gain efficiency throughout that deal process and all the way into the back office for completion of that deal. Um, so without further ado, I will pass it over to my good friend, Liz. Thanks so much, Joey. So as Joey mentioned, I'm going to walk through several situations for you guys that are fairly common uh, that we see. So with our first situation, we have our customer, Jane, who is shopping your dealership's inventory online. She finds the car she wants and applies for financing on your site. Jane gets to the dealership to find her paperwork is already in progress where she left off online and her digital contracting paperwork is almost ready. She looks over the deal documents on a tablet and signs them all. It's all going very quickly until it's time for registration and titling. This dealership is still using a manual process for registration and title. So they start printing out paperwork for Jane to sign. It's late in the day. So although they can print a temp tag for Jane to drive home with her new car today, Jane will still have to complete the registration process with the DMV after she leaves the dealership. 
This workflow is like getting off a bullet train and completing your journey on a hand car. Jane just wants to drive off with her new car and go on with her life, but now she has to go through the hassle of visiting the DMV to complete the process. So now I'm going to pause for a minute and pass it over to Victoria for our first poll question. Yeah, thanks, Liz. Um, our first question today, does your dealership use manual processes in the back office for registration and titling? Please take a few moments to submit your response. So yeah, numbers are coming in now, Liz. It looks like about 72% say that they have, they are still using manual processes today in their back office. Wow, thanks, Victoria. So 72%, so it looks like most of you on this call are in this first scenario and can really relate. So the good news is, um, I'm gonna walk through kind of the solution for this scenario. Now, Picture a dealership with an online, real-time, in-state registration and titling solution. The back office staff can take the completed contract and associated documents and finalize the registration and title transaction with the DMV right from the dealership, allowing Jane to finish her dealership experience quickly and drive off the lot in her beautiful new car, knowing that she doesn't have anything more to do other than enjoy her purchase. So other than making the customer experience seamless for Jane, there's a few key areas where you guys can benefit as well. Save time by minimizing the manual reg and title work with an enhanced digital interface. Provide more efficient and accurate and compliant processing with a powerful workflow management tools. Stay in the office with no need to physically go to the DMV to complete transactions, and we all know how fun the DMV can be, right? Enhance your customer experience so your CSI scores increase. I know everyone on this call can really understand how important it is to have high CSI scores, especially in today's market. So let's move on to our next scenario. Now we have a customer named Rudy who is looking to negotiate and buy a new vehicle. He's done his test drive, finished with his sales rep, and now he's waiting for the rest of the paperwork to be completed so he can drive off the lot in his shiny new car. Susan works in F&I and she's sitting at her desk toggling back and forth between screens to gain all the information needed to complete the deal. She wishes there was a way to seamlessly pull in Rudy's information straight from her DMS where it was already entered. She always worried, you know, she's always worried about making an error and she knows how time consuming it can be to resolve. Voiding a transaction because of an error will only make the customer have to wait longer. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Victoria again and we'll pause for another poll. Thanks Liz. Our second question, are your dealership's back office processes disconnected from your front office technology? Please take a few moments to submit your response now. Hey Liz, check that out. It looks like about 59% of people are saying that no, they are, they are 
not not dealing with technology in the back office this is connected from their front office yeah, thanks, Victoria. That's that's actually really good news and encouraging to know that all of the interactions we've been having out in the market are starting to catch on. So for the other kind of 40% of you guys, we'll talk through a solution for that as well. So let's say that this dealership had real time integration between their registration and titling solution and their DMS. In that case, there'd be no need to worry about gaps in data or errors introduced by rekeying information. With a streamlined and connected process, the experience for Rudy and a better workflow for the back office could help all around, as it would provide more efficient, accurate, and compliant processing with that powerful workflow management tool for your team. And to help ensure that the deal is accurate with no fear of needing the customer to come back and also allow for fees associated with DMV transactions to be entered into your general ledger with the touch of a button when that deal is done. All right, so next up, let's look at another scenario where we see more and more with dealers today. And with our current market, I bet most of you can relate to this scenario. Mike and Mary live in Illinois but they were shopping online and found a car they wanna buy from a dealership in Georgia that happens to be near the town where their son and daughter-in-law live. They complete a credit application online and make arrangements by phone and text to finalize their purchase in person. They don't mind driving down to complete the purchase, but they also have plans with their grandchildren while they're in town, so their time is limited. Mike and Mary head down to the dealer on Saturday and assume that because they started the process online before they left home, they'll have plenty of time for a trip to the zoo later that afternoon. When they get to the dealership, they take a quick test drive just to be sure, review F&I aftermarket options and complete the contract review and signing uh, digitally. Then they're asked to take a seat for far longer than they've expected. The problem is that the dealership doesn't get many customers from Illinois. So behind the scenes, the back office staff is scrambling to ensure the right tax and fee calculations for payment accuracy and locate the right forms to submit the registration and title paperwork. Meanwhile, Mike and Mary are getting impatient knowing that their family is eager to start their day of fun. So now I'm going to turn it over to Victoria once again to check in with you guys for another quick poll. Thanks, Liz. Our third question today is, is your dealership prepared to handle registration and title for customers from any state? Please take a few moments now to submit your response. Hey Liz, look at that. About 54% of our attendees are saying that their dealership is prepared to handle registration and title for customers from any state. All right, so you guys are, are pretty split, but again, the good news is that there is technology available today to help with car sales exactly like this. Using an out-of-state registration and titling solution can help dealerships be prepared to take advantage of the additional customers they're drawing with their internet presence. Dealerships are seeing a 16% growth in out-of-state transactions year over year, and we see a 25% increase in out-of-state buying activity when dealers use digital retailing tools on their website. Out-of-state reg and title is nearly impossible for any back office to know every single scenario. There are 51 unique DMV jurisdictions, 100 distinct sets of taxes and fees, 250 unique forms, and 300 possible registration and title transactions. If you combine all any one of those four things that play into developing that deal for that customer, you can imagine it gets pretty sticky. 
And lastly, we can provide your out-of-state customers with more accurate deal flexibility by using the only cross-border solution with real-time taxes and fees. So empower your F&I staff with new personalized customer checklists that clearly informs your customers of the documents required specific to their situation to complete the deal. So now I'm gonna turn it over back to my good friend, Joey, to talk about our last scenario. Thank you, Liz. Uh, 51 DMV jurisdictions, 100 distinct sets of taxes and fees, 250 unique forms. I was trying to figure out what the algebraic calculation is that I would have to do to figure out how many times I could get tripped up on that, but I gave up. My uh, high school math is a little bit fuzzy after the passage of quite a number of years. Anyway, uh, let's dig into our last example here. So let's for this one, let's talk about trade-in titles. We have a customer named Jackie. And Jackie has really done her homework. She started online and she picked out the exact car that she wanted after visiting a couple of online retailing sites. She also did the work in advance knowing that she had a trade-in that she wanted to bring in. So she looked at a vehicle valuation tool online and figured out exactly what she thought she'd be able to get for that vehicle she wants to trade. And then she goes into the dealership, completes the trade-in and drives off the lot with her new car. Now, what Jackie didn't realize and what no one at the dealership knows yet is that her ex-husband, Tom, is also on the title for that trade-in. So it could be a week or more before the lender calls the dealership and gives them the news. And then all uh, chaos breaks loose. The best case scenario here is that the dealership is able to easily get in touch with Jackie and she can secure Tom's agreement to go ahead with the trade-in. Uh, but then, as we all know, the best case scenario is not always the one that happens. So the worst case scenario here can really be pretty big headaches for the dealership and for Jackie. Let's say, for example, that Jackie can't reach Tom or that Tom refuses to agree to the sale. If Jackie can't afford the new vehicle without the trade-in, it could lead to you having to unwind that deal. If the dealership has already sold the trade-in vehicle, then they'll almost certainly lose their investment and they might face legal ramifications from Tom and potentially even from the buyers of that trade-in. Um, so lots of places where this can go south. And even if 99 out of 100 of your trade-in transactions go smoothly, a lot of you know it's that one vehicle that's sitting out behind your lot that's been there for six months because you can't get the title efficiently that uh, can cause all of the headaches. So with that, let's dive into our next poll question. And I believe this is our second to last one here. Um, so I'll turn it over to Victoria to pop that up for us. Thanks, Joey. So our next question is, does your dealership ever encounter payoff surprises that cause problems with the deal? Please just take a few moments now to submit your response. I'm always tempted to hum the Jeopardy theme while we're waiting on poll questions to come uh -huh. in, but I will refrain. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it looks like about 81% of our listeners today, Joey, are, uh, are saying that their dealerships have encountered payoff surprises causing problems with deals. Yeah, that's, uh, that is not surprising, Victoria. And I would guess that the 19% that said no uh, must either be engaging in extremely clean living or they haven't actually sold any cars this year. Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is all too frequent with the industry. And so for the, those of you that are in the painful red column here, the 81%, you've got lots and lots of company. Um, so what you might not know um, is that there's a great opportunity here to digitize this process and to take advantage of the digital technology that's out there while the customer is right there in your showroom. For example, you can use a trade in title solution in which the dealership has access to the full title details right then when that consumer is in the, sh in the storeroom with you. Um, so as you're talking to Jackie about that trade, you could have gotten in touch uh, you could have viewed an actual physical image of the title um, and be, been able to see exactly that Jackie's on that title and that Tom is also on that title. Right there in the moment, you could reach out to Tom and find out where he stands on that trade-in potential. Or you could say, hey, we're just going to put this whole deal on hold until we've got uh, both people here so we can we can close this out in the right way and make sure that there's no nothing um, that happens down the road that's going to be problematic for all of us. 
Gaining insights into title details like this can certainly help eliminate these unpleasant payoff surprises. We'll put that in air quotes and ensure that you receive clean titles for all of these trade-ins. Uh, dealers also have an important opportunity here to improve their inventory term. So I promised at the beginning we'd talk a little bit about cash flow. So let's spend a second to get into that here. So if you're leveraging the same technology that al allows you to see images of these titles and prevent those payoff surprises, you can frequently use that same technology to actually pay off these titles. So instead of uh, writing a paper check and sending that in through the U.S. Postal Service or uh, through whatever overnight uh, carrier you might use, you have an opportunity to send it in digitally using ACH. Um, a lot of our lenders, because we work with uh, hundreds if not thousands of them in any given month, and a lot of our lenders have indicated to us that when they get a check, they're going to sit on that check for a week or more to make sure that it clears before they actually process that payoff and release that title. So that's seven days that your check is just sitting there and you're just burning the cash flow that's associated with that vehicle, assuming that you're waiting to sell it until you get the title in hand. So it's time to evolve the mail and pray approach. Uh, the ACH transfer will allow lenders to release titles on the same day that those funds are received. Uh, and that means that once the ACH clears after three days, immediately they're going to pull that title and, and FedEx it to, uh, to you at the dealership. So you'll have that title within four business days, maybe six days if it crosses over a weekend. Um, and that's instead of what we typically hear our dealers tell us is kind of a 12 to 18, maybe even 21 to 25 day process. And frankly, those numbers are pre-COVID. So uh, in COVID, we all know is that the staffing levels have gone down and become more problematic at our lenders. The titles have slowed down a little bit more incrementally. Um, when you think about this, this slow inventory turn, we all know that that costs you time and money. I'm going to touch one more point here, and that's not only can you um, leverage a solution like this to get your titles faster to help you retail those cars more efficiently, but not every trade-in is created equal, and you may have trade-ins that are coming in that you simply don't want to carry on your lot. So those are probably going to be whole, wholesaled, and everybody's got a different strategy in terms of what they want to retail and what they don't, but most of you will use the wholesale auctions from time to time. And we know because of our sister company, Mannheim, that if you have that title in hand when you take your vehicle to auction, it literally doubles the chance that you're going to sell that vehicle when it goes through the lane for the first time. So if you want to think about having an efficient wholesale experience, the faster you can sell that car means the faster you can bring those, those cash proceeds home to your dealership to put them back into play for, for more vehicles. Um, so really exciting opportunities on the wholesale side. And then it's also worth pointing out that we've seen 15 times growth in lender adoption over the last several years with Accelerated Title, um, which is the solution that we have in this space. And that means that with 70 lenders that are currently available in that program, you've got 70 lenders where you don't spend time on the phone calling them and figuring out what your payoff quote is. You don't have to send in the mail checks to them. You don't have to wait on them to send those titles to you because that's all happening system systemically throughout the technology. Some, some pretty exciting opportunities. Um, so Liz, let's wrap things up. So to gain workflow efficiency, accuracy, cost savings and cash flow, the four things that we talked about that we promised to tell you about today and the four solutions and examples that uh, Liz and I've walked you through, we really believe the dealerships need solutions that allow them to focus on a handful of key things. First of all, extend those digital processes all the way through to the back office seamlessly build on the data that's been entered earlier in the deal. So make sure you never waste a keystroke, enter the data once and then let it flow through the deal. Make sure that you're accurately calculating those taxes and fees and completing the right forms for the customers, no matter what state they're dealing in. Um, and Liz talked about the incredible complexities when you're talking about an out-of-state deal in particular. And then avoid those payoff surprises and make sure you're accelerating that title release process for your trade-ins. Make sure you've got those titles flowing as efficiently as possible. So as soon as you can recon that vehicle, you can put it on your lot and sell it, knowing that you don't have any risk because you've got the title at hand ready to transfer. And then finally, all of this plays a role in saving your dealership time and money. And we all know time is money. So you can improve your customer experience and uh, really solidify the cash flow that uh, that's flowing through your dealers, which is always important, but certainly so much more important right now as we kind of go through this incredibly unique uh, period uh, for, you know, for all of our dealerships today. 
All right. So that is all of our content for today. Uh, we do have a question and answer segment that we're going to lean into here. We've got some great questions that are already coming in. Uh, we'd love to chat about those. But before we do that, we're going to pop up one last poll. Um, and this one is really easy. There are no wrong answers here. This is just an opportunity for you. If you heard something that you're interested in getting more information about, uh, you don't have to send us an email or call us to ask about it. You can just click on the appropriate button here. And we'll use that as a way to know that we've got to reach out and get in touch with you. So we'll leave that up for just a moment while you um, uh, have an opportunity to click through there. And I will pass it back over to Victoria to lean into our Q&A session. Thanks, Jerry. I'm just gonna give everybody a few, uh, a few more seconds to respond and then we'll, we'll get right to that. Okay, great. So thanks so much, Liz and Joey. Now we're gonna do a Q&A based on the questions that we've seen come in during the presentation. If we do run out of time, we'll reach out to you afterward to address your remaining questions. So first question, this goes out to you, Joey. How many lenders are available through Accelerated Title? That's a great question. So when Accelerated Title launched years ago, we launched with four lenders. And we actually just this past Friday uh, launched our 70th lender. So we have 70 lenders that are on the platform now. And um, the other thing that I think it's worth pointing out is uh, we have we have data that would indicate to us that those 70 lenders that participate on the platform represent more than a quarter of all of the loans that are outstanding in the country right now. Uh, so most of our dealerships tell us that they can they can use accelerated title for at least a quarter of their payoffs, if not a little bit more, depending on what state they're in and what lenders they typically work with. That's a great question. Great. Our next question is going to go out to you, Liz. So with what was discussed today about integration of dealer track applications, how does it tie in with other Cox Automotive products like VIN Solutions and Reg USA or Rapid Title, et cetera? Yeah, thanks, Victoria. That's another really great question. And as we talk about streamlining your approach to, I think, just the overall uh, car buying and car selling experience, you know, Joey mentioned time is money. And customers we know are growing more and more impatient or where it's not you know currently safe to go and be in a dealership for a long extended amount of time any way that we can gain a faster approach and cut off time such as rekeying it is really going to be key so take an internet lead for example that customer searches your website um, it will enter in all their information and submit the lead. One of your salespeople reaches out, schedules the appointment, has them come in. And that internet lead was captured into, say, our CRM product with Venn Solutions. And if your salesperson's doing what you want them to do, right, they're capturing as much information about that customer as they can. And so as you are identifying the right vehicle and you're adding in all the other information and then pushing that into your DMS, you can take that from each step of the process, so from your CRM to your DMS and pushing it from your DMS into the Reg and Title program, whether that's an in-state or our 50-state solution for uh, Reg USA, and, and pushing it through all of, um, all of those steps. So there really is an integration where it kind of passes from one phase to the next and ultimately just tying it in um, to where you can take it from end to end and speed up that total process for the customer. Great question. Great, this one goes back to you, Joey. Um, a question came in from someone saying, I have a process currently, there is no extra cost and it works fine. Why should my dealership take on accelerated title? Yeah, a great question and one that we get all the time. Um, I guess the, the first thing that I would say is um, dealers are pretty smart and they are really financially savvy. 
And so the best answer for me is to share with you that last month we helped the industry pay off over a half a billion dollars worth of titles. Um, so the industry is voting with their their with their uh, with their wallets, if you will. Um, but the the answer to this specific question is um, every every single dealership that we're dealing with has a process that they built, and some are great, and some are probably less great, frankly. Um, but the the reason why um, I think that the customers uh, that we have loved using Accelerated Title so much really is uh, boils down to a couple of things. One is um, it's a guaranteed way to make sure that you're getting those titles efficiently, typically within four to six days. Um, and that may vary a little bit based on whether it's a paper title or an electronic title. Um, the second is that you've got, we, you now would have access to a tool where you're able to get a payoff quote, save that payoff quote so you can reference it later. Uh, you're never sitting in short pays or over pays anymore because you're able to manage that through the application and it only takes an ACH payment for the exact amount that's due on that payoff. And you've got 24 seven reporting that's right there in front of you. So after you pay it off, you can check our queue and you can see exactly what's happening with that title, where it is in the process. Um, so the, the back office efficiencies of that are really significant. Um, and once we talk to a controller or a CFO or a general manager at a dealership, um, the math for them gets, gets pretty straightforward. The typical dealership has holding costs of about $32 a day per vehicle on their lots. And if we can get that title to you, uh, we charge $29.99 for a transaction. So it's less than $30 a transaction. And if we can get that title to you literally one day faster, so you can retail that car and get it off your lot one day faster than you would have otherwise, then you've already made your money back and gotten a 100% return on that. Great, Jerry, thanks so much. Um, so our next question, uh, this goes to you, Liz. For regular dealer track, agent transactions, not specifically for car dealers, um, are they able to be digitally e-signed for title transactions as well? Yeah, another great question. And wow, what a hot topic e-signatures is right now across the industry. And for the first time, it's not just on uh, the consumer side. States are more... Um, interested in e-signatures now more than ever. And we have been so engaged with our state partners um, to identify opportunities where we can speed up those transactions for them. And in a lot of ways, that means no matter your line of business, um, submitting those documents electronically. And, you know, especially when NHTSA came out and ruled that the odometer statement no longer had to be a wet signature, that changed the, that opened up the policy for each state to make those changes and submit, um, you know, those odometer statements electronically. And typically for us to see a policy change like that at the state DMV level uh, would take quite some time. I mean, we're talking years um, to enact legislation and make those changes. However, with, you know, COVID and that coming about and us seeing DMV shut down, you know, widespread for like the first time in history, if states are really looking forward to how can they pass you know, whatever whatever legislation or whatever policy changes they need to make uh, to look at every one of those documents and make sure that they are set up to be signed um, electronically. So those conversations, I would say it's such an exciting time for the industry uh, because it's really poised to advance uh, those changes on those documents. And, you know, we are currently submitting in the state of Massachusetts in our in-state product. Um, and that's been as a part of, in conjunction with their state modernization of their technology infrastructure. So they had to be able to accept that document digitally and we needed to make sure that their technology was current enough to be able to receive that. So there's a lot of things at play, uh, but it is such an exciting time uh, for those changes to happen. Uh, so I, I look forward to seeing, you know, many updates in the next year um, about those changes coming down the line. Thanks, Liz. Uh, before I go on, I've been receiving uh, a bunch of questions about whether or not this was being recorded. 
we want to let everybody know that yes, we recorded it, recording the entire webinar and we will be um, circulating it to everybody on the call now. So just keep an eye on the email where we'll, we will be sending you the video. You could share it with your colleagues and friends. Um, so our next question, uh, this goes to you, Joey. So how much uh, extra does accelerated title cost? Also, what role would our title clerk play? Would this make her job obsolete? Well, that's a great question. So um, the first the first answer on the pricing, and I think I mentioned this before. So accelerated title is a transaction pricing model, meaning that we don't charge you anything to get you signed up and get you onboarded. Uh, we don't charge you anything for training. There's no one time implementation charge. The only thing that we charge for is when you actually use it to submit that ACH payment. Uh, so you get all the payoff quotes you need. You look at the title image when you're ready to transact, then you'll send in um, that ACH payment. Let's say the loan amount is $10,000. Then your ACH will actually be for $10,000 plus $29.99. And then we'll get that payment. We'll uh, scrape the fee off the top and push that money to the lender. And at the same time, release the title on that lender's behalf because the nature of our relationships allows us to uh, service that loan portfolio on the lender's behalf. Um, and the second question was, um, you know, or the second part of that question was, well, what happens to, um, you know, to my team that's working on these titles? Um, and will their job become obsolete? And the answer is no, their job doesn't become obsolete because as I mentioned, we have 70 lenders that participate in accelerated title, but you're always going to have lenders that are outside of the system for whatever reason. Maybe they haven't signed up yet, or if they have signed up, maybe they're not onboarded quite yet, um, or maybe they manage their own titles. And if we don't manage their titles, we can't put them on our program right now. Um, so uh, your, your title clerk in your store will be the primary person that we work with. We train them and we give them all these use credentials so they can go into the, the system and they can do all of those transactions and also see where their titles are. Um, and, but they will also always have some, some level of activity that they'll have to do outside of the system up until the point where literally every single lender in the country is, is participating in accelerated title. And we'd love for that to be the case, but it's uh, not the case quite yet. Thanks, Joey. Uh, this one's for you, Liz. Uh, how is an out-of-state solution going to benefit my customer experience? Yeah, wow, these are really good questions. Um, another topic that I love to talk about, I've spent the majority of my time in automotive focused around the customer experience. So this one's really near and dear to my heart. So uh, take the, the scenario that I mentioned earlier, you know, customer couple living in Illinois, has family in Georgia, purchases there. And, you know, for for cross-border states, you think of like Indiana and Illinois, it's pretty common, um, especially where Chicago is located, for there to be a lot of crossover. And so it's typical that if you're in Illinois or in Indiana, you would have some sort of working knowledge of what kind of paperwork you're going to need or what kind of documents are going to be required um, to complete that transaction. And Florida is another one of those states because there are so many, you know, uh, we'll call them snowbirds, right, that come down from the northern states and, and spend time in Florida and typically like to register their cars there because of the tax breaks. So a lot of people know like certain pieces of the registration process. However, when you get into situations like military or, um, you know, we're going to be living here, but we want to register while our, you know, son is off at college. And can you check our taxes and see which is going to be the better deal? Can you do that deal comparison? You can in our 50 state solution. So if you don't know what the taxes are going to be like in a county based system, you know, I made reference earlier to there are just literally hundreds and hundreds of scenarios. Um, you can now provide that to your customer before it's, you know, it's a manual lookup. I mean, you can Google the DMV um, and you can try and find what you need. But what's going to happen is that deal is going to get rejected. And when a deal gets rejected, now you got to deal with the DMV twice. But you also have to go get in touch with your customer again and find that document 
and get an original, which is really difficult to do if you're a dealer in Georgia and your customer now is back in Illinois. So it's really, really hard to kind of chase that deal down. And it's really annoying to your customer, right? So in our 50 state solution, as you are completing the deal and you have you know, decided the vehicle and you've even compared where you want to register it and you make that final decision, it generates with you. And what I mean by that is, I think of it as like turbo tax for reg and title. So is your customer military? Yes or no? And as you start to answer those questions, our checklist is generated, tailored specifically to your scenario and to your customer. So now they know exactly the documents they will need that will be required. And the beauty of the Illinois and the Georgia scenario is you can have that conversation over the phone and you can say, Mr. Customer, please be sure to bring an original of this, this, and this. And it's okay to have a copy of your insurance card. But, oh, by the way, you know, in this state, we need to make sure that it's, you know, won't be expired in 30 days. There are all sorts of crazy you know, rules and regulations out there when it comes to titling that can cause your deal to be rejected. And it, literally, it, nobody's going to know all of them. So what I love so much about this business, I literally learn at least three things new every day. Um, and it's always changing. So it really is, you know, to your customer's benefit, as well as your benefit to be able to get all the information correct up front the first time and be able to speed up that process and have everything that you need so that your customer has a flawless experience on the back end. Hey Liz, I'm gonna actually stay with you for this, uh, this next question um, as it applies to DMS integration. So with the DMS integration, are the sale price and taxes going to get pulled in with the customer information? Yes, it's another great question. So what is cool about DMS integration with our products is DMSs I think are so unique to your workflow and your dealership and how you work your deals and how you have things structured. And so there's often, I don't know that I've ever seen a dealership that doesn't have custom mapping in their DMS. And so we work with you um, upon, upon implementation to make sure that those fields in whatever DMS you're using, that we extract that information and that we get it loaded into uh, any one of our platforms so that you can then speed through that process. Great, thanks Liz. Um, so uh, on a side, we've been hearing, we've been asked, being asked about whether we can provide a list of our 70 lenders that Joey was speaking about earlier. And um, we're gonna attach the, um, the link to the email that we also include the webinar recording in. But the list of our lenders is currently available right now on go.dealertrack.com forward slash AT lenders, which is accessible to everyone and is being updated right now with our new, newly added lenders. Uh, but, but again, after this uh, webinar, we'll be providing the recorded uh, version along with a copy of that list for everybody on the call. Um, our last question is going out to Liz again. Um, so how much does uh, the 50 state solution cost? Yeah, that's another really good question. I think I've said that every single time. This has been great. So um, there are, it's a flat fee um, and it is, there's often, and the reason I'm kind of hesitating is, you know, I'm I'm not in sales and I'm always hesitant to give out any of those numbers um, because just like, you know, on the training and account management side, um, I wouldn't want them to kind of over promise or misquote anything. Um, but I will tell you that we do have a monthly subscription fee. So it's a little different from how our accelerated title product runs. Um, but why we have that monthly subscription fee is because you're you're paying for the access to run those fees and forms. So those taxes and fees that I was talking about, giving us that live and, and real time as you're building those scenarios for your customers, 
that actually can be done in the program um, upstream of whether the customer decides to buy the car, right? So you're talking to that internet deal and you're actually working through and it helps you give them a better idea of what their true, you know, out the door cost would be. So that covers that portion. And then once they come in and they're purchasing the vehicle and you're going to handle that paperwork for them, that's where the um, individual transaction price comes in. So, and that one, I would just say, you know, if, if you're interested, um, I know my conversation or my contact information is down there. Um, feel free to reach out to me and we'll get you into the, the hands of the right salesperson across the country um, to make sure that they have that scenario set up for you and discuss that individually based off of, you know, your rooftops and your volume and that sort of thing, because we really tailor that to each customer. So thanks to everybody. That's all the time that we have today. Please feel free to reach out to our speakers with any additional questions. You'll see that their contact information is provided for you there on screen. And watch your email for a link to view the webinar as well as the, the attachment with our lender list to share with your colleagues. Have a great day.